What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2025 Mazda CX-70 Turbo S Premium. Huge thank you to John Gutierrez over at Safford Brown Mazda of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular CX-70 or any Mazda product, then I'll be sure to have John's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It has been a beautiful day outside here today. However, every now and again, it is a bit breezy. So I apologize in advance if there is any wind noise in today's video. But just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2025 Mazda CX-70 Turbo S Premium. And this particular one's been painted in the $450 polymetal gray metallic. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2025, the CX-70 is a new nameplate in the Mazda lineup and it is based upon the CX-90, except the CX-70 has two rows of seating, whereas the CX-90 has three. But this one being the Turbo S Premium, as standard, you get adaptive LED headlights with high beam control, as well as LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. Now I'm gonna take a step to the left and give you a front on shot of this thing. And this one being the Turbo S Premium, you get the gloss black mesh style grill with the Mazda logo located at the center. Just beneath the Mazda logo, you will find a forward facing camera. And that is because this trim level comes standard with a 360 degree view camera system. Now at the bottom of your front grill, you get the black chrome signature wing. And this is what I'm referring to as the signature wing. Now, speaking of safety features, in addition to the 360 degree view camera system, you also get four forward facing sensors as well. Now I'm gonna take a step back, give you a better shot of the entire front end. I'm also gonna let you know that you get satin black lower and outer grills and the outer grills are also the mesh style except they are non-functional you can see also you get a little bit of venting on the outsides of the outer grills as well here's another view of what that looks like and then finishing things off up here at the front end you get the body color lower fascia which is what this piece is down here whereas on some of the lower trim levels that is satin black and it does not look as premium as the turbo s premium does and then last but not least you get 8.1 inches of ground clearance so this is based on the CX-90. It rides on the same chassis as the CX-90. They do look very similar. However, in my opinion, I think the CX-70's front fascia looks much more aggressive, much better than the CX-90. You can let me know your opinions on that in the comments down below. I like the way that these outer grills look better than the outer grills on the CX-90. But as mentioned, you get the body color lower fascia and that body color lower fascia leads into your body color wheel arch moldings. You also get your inline six fender badging there with some of that black chrome accenting and then this one being the turbo s premium you get the 21 inch black metallic with machine cut finished wheels and the wheels are wrapped in 275 45 falcon zx ct 60a all season tires i'm going to give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick as best that i can and now i'm going to take a step back and give you a front three quarter shot of this thing. I'm also gonna let you know that as standard with this trim level, you get rain sensing wipers. And also one thing that's cool about the Turbo S Premium is that you get the gloss black mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power folding, the driver side mirror is auto dimming. You will also find your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror. You also get memory function. So you get two memory seat adjustment settings for the driver right here. Not only is it going to memorize the driver seat settings as well as the steering wheel settings, it also memorizes the outer mirror settings as as well which is very nice if you have more than one person driving the vehicle and then at the bottom of all of your both side view mirrors you get a camera and that camera works with the 360 degree view camera system now i'm going to take a step back give you a side profile shot of this thing and at the top of the roof line you can see you get the gloss black roof rails however this particular one's been optioned with the 625 dollar destination set which gives you the black crossbars you can see that is what they look like there and then you also get the satin black window trim. You get body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind, however, the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get the keyless access function. And then at the bottom of all of your passenger doors, you get the body color door cladding with the black chrome accenting. You get the Mazda lettering here on the rear two doors. There's a closer view of that. 
Now coming around back on the driver's side, you have your fuel door. In order to access the fuel door, the vehicle has to be unlocked. You do not get a capless filler neck and premium fuel is recommended. Doesn't mean you have to put in it, but it is recommended. And then up top here, you can see you get your body color shark fin antenna. You get a gloss black roof spoiler. And this is the part on the CX-90 that kind of looks like a whale to me. I don't know, it kind of looks like a humpback whale. Kind of interesting design here. Um, I think they could have maybe done a little bit better back here. But anyways, that's just my personal opinion. Coming around back, you can see you have your integrated third brake light. You get a rear window defroster, a rear wiper, and LED combination taillights. Taking a step back, here is a rear three-quarter shot of this thing. Taking a step to the right, here's a little booty shot of this thing. You can see you get chrome badging back here. You get your backup camera offset to the right of your Mazda logo. And as standard with this thing, you get a hands-free height adjustable power liftgate. If you wanted to open up the liftgate, put your hand underneath here. You'll feel a little pad. Press on that pad and the liftgate will open up. Now, this one has been optioned again with the destination set. So with the destination set, you get the cargo cover, which is what this piece is right here. You also get the first aid kit and the cargo net as well included in that package. Um, now, this one being the CX-70, again, you do not get the third row seats, though it kind of does look like the third row seats are folded down. There are no third row seats here with this thing, uh, but you can still see, you still get like the same third row things that you get um, with the CX-90 back here. Now you get also these two buttons. So if you click either one of these two buttons, that is how you drop your second row seat. So let's click the right button. That is going to drop the right seat. You also get a little grocery bag hook here, grocery bag hook there. You also get a 12 volt power outlet here on the passenger side of the trunk. And if you lift it up on this trunk piece here, it's kind of hard to do with just one hand, but back there, you can see you get some storage space. You could set jumper cables and stuff like that. And then underneath this piece right here, you kind of got to pop it up a little bit. This is where you will find your spare tire. So it's definitely nice to see a spare tire with this thing, as well as your jack. Closing that back up. That's really kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area. You can see this one not having third row seats. You get a ton of trunk space back here. But then you get these two buttons. That button is to close, or that button's to close the power lift gate. That button is to lock the vehicle. And then you also get an LED light here on the lift gate itself. Pressing that button, the lift gate will begin to close. And we're gonna finish things off here at the back end. So you can see you get a body color rear bumper with four integrated parking sensors. You also get like those two outer grills here on the rear bumper as well. They are satin black and they also have integrated reflectors. Now down here you get your satin black rear valence and then this one, uh, this particular one's been optioned with the $900 Premier towing package which gives you the trailer hitch, the harness for the trailer hitch, the tow ball mount and the trailer brake controller on the interior. And if you opted for that, you might as well know what the max tow capacity is. So the max tow capacity of the CX-70 Turbo S Premium is 5,000 pounds. So let's say you have a 21 foot center console. You can pull that, you can pull your two jet skis, you can pull your side by side. As long as what you're towing is under 5,000 pounds, you're gonna have no problem doing it. Yeah, maybe once you get around 5,000 pounds, she might struggle a little bit, but when you'll see what we talk about, the power numbers here in a bit, it might be totally fine and it might have not have any sort of struggles with pulling something up a hill or something like that. But anyways, with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals, well, a plastic cover, but underneath that plastic cover, you'll find a 3.3 liter turbo inline six cylinder that works with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. Total output is 340 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. It's mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 5.6 seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 23 miles per gallon in the city, 28 miles per gallon on the highway for 25 miles per gallon combined with standard all wheel drive. Now this particular one is their S model. They also have a non S model. However, the non S model makes 60 less horsepower than the S model. So if you want the power, you're gonna wanna get the S. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot reach my goal without your support so if you're enjoying the video if you've learned anything thus far please just take a second to like comment and subscribe i would greatly appreciate it but with that stuff out of the way let's move into the interior
Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier, you get keyless access as standard. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. You can also lock it if you run your finger across this rectangle here and now it is locked. This is what the key fob looks like. It's satin black with some satin chrome accenting and going over the functions on it, starting from the top, you have your lock function, your unlock function, your power lift gate function and your panic function at the bottom. But now let's see what the interior of this particular Turbo S Premium has to offer. So this one's been specced with the black Napa leather upholstery. You can also spec it with the red Napa leather upholstery. We'll get more into that here in a second because this is what the driver door panel looks like. So up top here, you get some vinyl wrapping. This thing comes standard with a 12 speaker Bose sound system. So you get a speaker up top there. You also get some silver trim, your unlock and your lock functions, your power side view mirror controls. That button is to power fold in or out your side view mirrors you get automatic up and down windows at all four corners and that button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges you also get a leather wrapped armrest that's nicely padded with some accent colored stitching you also get some storage space a spot you could set a water bottle and that kind of about does it for the door panel this is what your front seats look like so as standard you get an eight-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar and two memory seat adjustment settings you also get an eight-way power front passenger seat and as standard these front seats are heated and ventilated but stepping on into the interior take a listen to what it sounds like when you close the door now let's fire it up And that is what it sounds like when you fire this thing up from the driver's perspective. And now what I'm gonna do is walk you throughout the entire interior starting over here. So first things first, you can see you get an HVAC vent. Beneath that, this is going to turn your driver assistance aids like the sounds, like let's say you have your blind spot monitoring, somebody's in the zone, you turn your turn signal on and it goes beep, beep, beep. That is to turn those beep, beep, beeps off. This is to turn your parking sensors both front and rear on or off. That is to turn your traction control system on or off and I stop is your auto stop start system. So you can turn that on or off as well. Now beneath that, that is how you open and or close your power lift gate. You get two memory seat adjustment settings. And then this one being optioned with the premier towing set, you get the integrated trailer brake controller, which is what this thing is down here. It's a very bizarre integrated trailer brake controller. But anyways, that is what that is down there. Uh, and then as standard with this thing, you get the power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So you can bring the steering wheel towards you. You can push the steering wheel away from you and it also goes up and down. That is also included with the memory functions. So definitely very nice. Uh, and then taking a look at what we got going on here. So first things first, take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like here on the CX-70. And not only is it the turn signal control stock, it is also the headlight control stock, the high beam control stock, and the button on the end is to turn your automatic high beams on or off. Now all the way up, you have your headlights on. That is parking lights on that is headlights automatic and all the way down is headlights off i like to leave it in automatic personally now zooming back out this is what your steering wheel looks like it is leather wrapped and it is also heated to turn the heated steering wheel on you come over to here you click that button and that turns the heated steering wheel on you also get steering wheel mounted paddle shifters upshift paddle here downshift paddle there and like any other vehicle you have your horn at the center i'll get into that here in a second once those people uh, walk in because i don't want to honk and then they look anyways coming over to here you have your volume control so you get your volume up volume down and if you push on it that is to turn uh, the audio system to mute and then to the right of that button pushing up is to bring you forwards on a track pushing down is to bring you backwards on a track and if you push on that button that is going to switch you between your different audio sources coming over to here that is to speak to the vehicle as well as pick up on a phone call that is to hang up on a phone call and that info button is to control the different information that you see down there i'll get more into that here in a second now coming to the right hand side of the steering wheel as standard with this thing you get adaptive cruise control with stop and go you also get the lane keep assistant so this is for your lane keeping system and all of these other controls here are for your adaptive cruise control system as mentioned, when we were on the exterior part of the video, you get rain sensing wipers. And when the rain sensing wipers are active, you get that light that illuminates right there. Let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like here on the CX-70. Now, moving up to here, this is to bring you between your different trip A and trip B information. So right now that is the odometer. Click that once, that is the trip A information. Click that again, that is trip B information. And let's say we wanted to reset trip B, all you gotta do, press and hold on trip and it is going to reset that value right back down to zero. 
And then on the right hand side of the gauge cluster, these two buttons are to brighten and or dim the gauge cluster as well as the backlit buttons. Now, the gauge cluster itself is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and you can see you have your tachometer, your speedometer, your coolant temperature gauge, your fuel gauge. This is configurable. That is the uh, fuel range. Right now that is trip B, click that one more time. That is your odometer, ambient exterior temperature. That's letting us know that the vehicle is ready to go. And if you wanted to control what you see over here again, uh, all you have to do is you go to the info button. And then right now we can see like the battery stuff. We can see the fuel economy. Then you got your uh, eye active sense, which is like your driver assistance features. Then you get your compass. This is like your, um, notification stuff so basically the vehicle had a dead battery when i picked it up and it has a check engine light because of that uh, and then that is to turn that stuff off and that brings you back into this screen so very easy to use screen here and then above that this one being the turbo s premium you get the head-up display and right now the head-up display is displaying the digital speedometer readout Coming over to here, you get this massive 12.3 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto connectivity. Um, so one thing that's kind of interesting about this screen is that it is touch screen when you're in your Apple CarPlay screen, but when you're in the Mazda screen, it is not touch screen. So I can touch it all I want and it's not gonna turn on. Now, if I come over to here and I flip this down, that's gonna bring me into my Apple CarPlay screen. And now the screen is touch screen. So that's just a very kind of interesting thing. It's touch screen when you're not in, or when you're in Apple CarPlay, but it's not touch screen when you're not in Apple CarPlay. So I'm gonna go into the Mazda screen again, and I'm gonna mess with the screen, and you can see it is not touch screen. So just kind of weird. Uh, and if I click to the left here, that's gonna bring me into my notification stuff. So it says engine malfunction. Um, and then to control what I see on the infotainment system, I have this scroll knob with these shortcut buttons to shortcut you into navigation, audio, home button, back button, push down on this, that is to select. And then if you go to the left or the right, that is how you navigate throughout the screen. So going to the right brings you down, going to the left brings you up. And let's say we wanted to go into our settings. So we're gonna go into settings here and you can go into your in-vehicle displays. This is your head-up display. They call it the active driving display. You can adjust the height of it up or down. You can adjust the brightness of it and you can also adjust the tilt. So you can move it like this, you can move it like that. And you can also adjust um, the different information that you see on it as well. And then just going back, one feature I wanted to show you was that it has the driver personalization system. So this is kind of interesting. Um, so if you go and you set this up, basically it's gonna bring you through a few different screens. It's gonna make you set yourself to your perfect driving position. And let's say you have your driving position and then your wife has their driving position, right? So basically what you step into the vehicle, it's going to basically have facial recognition. It's gonna read your face and it's gonna set you right into your driver setting. But let's say your wife gets in the car right after you, right? It's gonna set to her driver position because of the facial recognition system. So I think that is pretty cool. Uh, and then you get all your different other settings here and very easy to use screen. I don't feel like you need to spend too much time on it. It's touch screen when in Apple CarPlay and then it's not touch screen when you're not in Apple CarPlay. Very easy to use screen. Then you got your hazard button here. You get two HVAC vents. This comes standard with a tri-zone climate control system. And as mentioned earlier, you get heated and ventilated front seats. Both get three levels of adjustability. This is what the climate control stack looks like. I love how it has the physical climate controls. That is awesome. Definitely appreciate that Mazda. And then beneath that, you have your wireless charging pad. So that is an iPhone 14 Pro Max in the wireless charging pad. It does fit in the wireless charging pad, but it doesn't seem uh, to want to work with my phone. Sometimes certain Mazdas don't work with my iPhone. Just kind of interesting. And then to the right of the wireless charging pad, you get a 12 volt power outlet. Behind that, you get these two cup holders. If you don't want to see the cup holders, you can close that back off. And then you get this like, you know, kind of like almost like silver mesh style um, pattern here. But anyways, you get the two cup holders. Then you get your MI drive. That is, your, or these are your different drive modes. You get four drive modes. So all the way up, you have your towing mode. One thing that's kind of cool about the uh, infotainment screen is let's say we go into sport mode, right? It's going to change what the digital gauge cluster looks like, make it look a little bit more sporty. Uh, and then you get your normal mode and your off-road mode. Now I haven't checked if off-road mode has a different gauge cluster, but I guess it does. Yep, it's a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in normal mode for right now. And then behind that stuff, you have your hill descent control button. This is going to pop up your 360 degree view camera system. That is what the 360 degree view camera system looks like. Click that one more time and the camera system goes away. 
Behind here, you get an electronic parking brake. If you wanted to disengage that, you push your foot on the brake, push against that button, and it will disengage. Then you have your auto hold function right there. If you uh, activate the auto hold function, basically what it does is that, let's say you're stuck in traffic on 95, it's standstill. Basically, when you have that active, the vehicle is going to hold itself in place by itself with its braking system. And all you got to do to move forward again is hit the gas. It's actually a very, very nice system. Uh, and then over here, you have your volume control knob. If you click on the volume control, that is how you mute the audio system. And then if you push to the right, that is to go forwards on a track. If you push to the left, that is going to go backwards on a track. And then you have a favorites button right here. I'm going to show you what uh, the favorites button is set to right now. It's set to the uh, active driving display. So basically, you can set that button to what you want it to be. And then back here, you get a nicely padded armrest, as you can see. And you can open up either one side or the other side, but you open up both sides, you get two USB-C ports down in there. You get about two inches of depth, followed by like 10 inches this way. So decent amount of storage space, not all that much down in there. And then coming to the passenger side, you do not get a lockable glove box. It's a decent sized glove box. I have seen bigger uh, in a three row SUV, but you can fit what you need to, like your napkins, your straws, the snacks and stuff like that. It just might be a little bit snug. Uh, and then up top here, this particular one's been optioned with the $800 digital rear view mirror, whereas this would just come standard with like a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror. You also get your home link down here, which is your universal garage door opener. So these three buttons, you can open up three different garage bays. Um, and then let's say you really like the spec on this particular one, but you'd like, ah, man, I do not like that uh, digital mirror. Well, you can flip this forward and now it's just going to behave like a regular auto dimming mirror would. Personally, for me, I do like the digital rear view mirror because I find that it rids me of my blind spots. Uh, and then another thing is that you have these three controls over here. So if I click on this one, I can adjust uh, the brightness of it. If I click on that one more time, I can move this up. I can move this down uh, and that's kind of about it. So I like this, you may not like it, but everybody's got the right to their own opinion. Uh, and then up top here, this is where it lets you know who's buckled, who is not buckled. That's letting you know if the passenger airbag is on or off. You get your LED reading lights. This is your instant dome light on button right here. That is going to turn on all the interior dome lights as you can see. Uh, if you want just your individual lights, you click this one, individual driver light, individual passenger light. And then this button right here is whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the door. So when that is illuminated in amber, when I open up the doors, the interior lights do not turn on. If that is not illuminated, then uh, when I open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. And then as standard with this thing, you get the panoramic sunroof. So if you pull back once, that is just going to open up the shade. If you pull back um, a second time, that is going to open up the sunroof. So the sunroof kind of opens up interestingly, kind of like the CX-50 uh, does. It doesn't like open up like a normal sunroof does. It almost just like looks like it's tilted even though it's slid. But if you wanted to tilt it, you just push up and that is how the sunroof will tilt open. Now behind all those controls, you get a spot you could set your sunglasses up top here. You also get a vanity mirror with an LED vanity light. And there's a view of that and then you can set any small little paper product here. And then the visor slides forwards and backwards dependent on where the sun is shining. I'm gonna close that thing back up. Then the driver gets a no poop handle as does the front passenger. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. So um, a couple things I wanted to say, I wanted to talk about seat comfort. I think these seats are very comfortable. Um, maybe they, they're not firm, but they're not like super like cushy either. They're kind of like that happy medium. I find them very comfortable. I can do a long road trip in this thing. Um, but now I'm just gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at everything that you get as standard with this thing. I would suggest take a look where it says Turbo S Premium and it tells you where uh, all the different things that you get with this trim level. I suggest you take a look at that because it lets you know what this trim level gives you that the trim level beneath it does not. Um, but basically I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2025 CX-70 Turbo S Premium is spec is $56,680. Honestly, that's a pretty decent price considering what you get. You know, I did a video with a Honda uh, Pilot Black Edition. I can't remember, but I do know that it was like 50 some thousand dollars and that made quite a bit less power than this one does. Pretty much the same features. Um, you know, really comes down to what you want. You want the power and the nice features. Well, the Mazda is going to offer that. The Honda can't offer that. It doesn't make nearly as much power as this. Um, but, you know, that's kind of about it for what we got going on in the front. I do want to show you what we got going on in the rear before moving into the driving portion of the video.
So back here, you'll see that we get the second row sunshades. You can pull that up. I call these the peasant blockers here. Um, I'm gonna put this seat back up here first and then move the window sticker also out of the way. And this is what the door panel looks like. So first things first, bring the peasant blocker down. You get automatic up and down windows back here. The window are restricted right now. But again, automatic up and down windows back here. You also get some storage space down there. The window doesn't go all the way down, but here it nearly goes all the way down. You get a padded armrest, storage space. This is what the second row seats look like. You get the bench seat. Again, this is the 70s, so you do not get the third row. Uh, and then this is to recline the seat. Stepping on into what we got going on back here. So first things first, Opu panel, a spot you can set your dry cleaning and an LED dome light. You get a seat back pocket behind both the driver and the front passenger seat. You get two HVAC vents, two USB-C ports, and you get heated outboard second row seats with three levels of adjustability. Tri-zone climate, so you can adjust the climate controls for the rear seats. Same stuff over there on that side. Uh, and then opening this up, you get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. And again, I showed you that lever earlier on the side of the seat. You pull up on that and you push back. That is how you recline these second row seats. So I could do a very long road trip in this thing. This thing is built for three rows. So um, it's very comfortable, especially just having two rows, right? But one thing, I would think that this would have more leg room than it does. However, I have enough leg room, me being five foot nine, and I am adjusted behind myself. There's the leg room. There's another view of the knee and leg room. And I've got plenty of headroom being five foot nine. Uh, and then these second row seats are also comfortable as well. But you know, we talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive, as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat all right now on to the driving portion of the video take a listen easy acceleration i mean this thing very easy acceleration it takes it a little bit of time there's a little bit of lag in the pedal uh, when you first floor it but i'm gonna see if that is corrected when you put it into sport mode i would assume that it probably is um, now i'm gonna floor it Yeah, it is definitely corrected when you put it into sport mode. Um, there's still a little bit of lag when you like hit the pedal. It takes it about like half a second in order for it to like get up and go. But once it's getting up and going, I mean, this is a very fast SUV. I mean, it is no joke quick. Uh, and it sounds fantastic as well. I'm always a big fan of the way that inline six cylinders sound. I mean, they just sound fantastic. I mean, they're really, really a good sounding engine. Um, I'm always just, I really like the way that they sound, right? So one uh, vehicle in particular uh, is that the uh, like the BMW M340i or like the BMW X3 M40i, they've got the B58, which is the inline turbo six, and it sounds phenomenal. And this is no different. I mean, yeah, it doesn't maybe sound like the BMW does, but it still sounds really, really good. So I'm a big fan of the way that the inline motors sound. Obviously, this is an SUV review, so I don't think you guys really care about the way that this thing sounds, but some of you I'm sure do. So anyways, it's very, very quick. I mean, especially for an SUV, that's why this is the Turbo S. So you do get an additional 60 horsepower. So the non-S models make 280 horsepower. The S models make 340 horsepower. Quite a big jump there um, with the power figures. Now, one thing I wanted to say is that with the non-S models, you can put regular in this um, or in the non-S models. With the S models, it says that premium is recommended. And then it also, like one thing that's interesting is that on the Mazda website, it doesn't even give you any sort of like power figures for this thing running on regular. So I'm assuming that they really want you to put premium in this, whereas with the non-S model, you can put regular in. So I'm gonna try to go here. This is like a pretty ruthless intersection here. Nobody wants to let you go. Um, I'm gonna do another little acceleration here as well. There's a cyber truck. Those cyber trucks are very interesting looking, you know. I'm, I might have to do a video with one of those here soon, but I almost feel like they're overhyped at this point. But if you guys want to see a cyber truck video, let me know in the comments down below because I do know somebody who's got one right now. So if you want to see a video with that, let me know. Uh, anyways, this is a very nice vehicle. It's comfortable. And, you know, it's still the big body because it is based off of the CX90. So 
it's basically a three row body, but it's got two rows, so you get the additional trunk space. Um, so it's kind of interesting, and I saw some analogy of the CX-70 and the CX-90 was like the Jeep Grand Cherokee and the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, right? So they're similar thing here. This is basically like the five seater, and the CX-90 is the seven or eight seater. We'll do a nice little handling test here. All things considered, very good handling. Do another little test here. Yeah, there might be a little bit of body roll, but that's kind of to be expected with a three row SUV, but I'm actually kind of surprised at how well it went around those turns. You know, let's see, body roll test. Not too much body roll, not too much body roll at all. You know, some of like the Subaru Scent and Honda Pilot have a little bit more body roll than this, I feel like just off the top of my head from memory. Um, and then once I take a little left turn here, I'm gonna do just a nice little regular acceleration. It's got the effortless power. The transmission is super, super smooth when it's shifting gears and it shifts, keeps it under 2000 RPM, but you're still moving at a pretty decent clip of speed as well. Very nice driving experience, you know, precision of the steering is right there, right where you want it to be. Yeah, you can't really have, don't really have much steering feel, but this is a CX-70. This is a family SUV. It's not a Porsche 911, for example, where you want the steering feel. Um, sound system sounds great with the Bose sound system. Very good sound system. Haven't really been in many vehicles that have Bose sound systems where the sound systems are not good. Bose is usually uh, really, really good. Here's another little handling test great going around that turn as well here's a little acceleration passing power nothing floored I mean you can see it just it's very effortless power and that is like a big selling point to the s is if you want the just effortless power that's on tap at all times the s is the way to go but if you're somebody you know like ah, I do like the power but you know 280 is enough for me then you're gonna be fine with that as well. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, do you wanna pay up for the power? And if you do wanna pay up for the power, you enjoy extra power, then you should get the S model. If you're not really, you don't really care that much about the power, you're gonna be fine with the non S model. Just to summarize this thing, it's very comfortable, very great driving experience. It handles well, uh, and it's got just effortless power. It doesn't have blow your socks off power. It's got effortless power, which is great for daily driving, great for driving on the highway. Um, so when it comes to the power, great um, just a very nice family vehicle if you're a family of four this might be the vehicle for you if you do want the three row version of this they do have the cx90 as well but just a very nice vehicle i do like the way that the cx70 looks better than the cx90 as well because it's got the specific front and rear fascias whereas the cx90 is eh, it doesn't look quite as good as this but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything from the video, please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. The likes and the comments and the subscriptions all look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. So I'd appreciate it if you do those three things. I also wanted to say thank you guys so much for 40,000 subscribers in the landscape of YouTube. It's really not all that much, but to me it is huge and I appreciate each and every one of you guys so thank you all so much for the continued support but again that is it for today's video i will catch you all in the next one peace